Hi guys, this is Mac here and I welcome you all to my YouTube channel. This is Mac here and I have a great guest of mine for today's session. Her name is Miss Rometa Albusaidi. She is a marine scientist and she promotes environmental youth leadership program and for the women rights. Welcome Miss Rometa. How are you doing, sister? Hello, Miss Rometa. Nice to meet you and thank you so much for hosting me. I'm doing very well. Alhamdulillah, that's my really uh, great honor to have you in my session today and everyone is excited to have you in my session basically because we're going to be talking about a very important topic which was been discussed that's called building confidence in difficult times. We all are going through these difficult times for sure because of COVID-19 but again COVID-19 cannot stop our plans, our vision, our ideas and how we should be going about it and the confident people always prosper what do you have to say on that ma'am please go ahead cool. just give a little well, bit I intro introduction of yours for all my viewers and let's see how we can proceed from that all right great so uh i'm ramaitha as uh mac mentioned and i am currently in oman uh stuck at home quarantine until things are better I am a marine scientist by background, um, and I recently also graduated, actually yesterday, with a master's in public policy from uh, Harvard. Congratulations for that. Thank you. Congratulations um, for that. Yeah. I'm very passionate about the environment and also very passionate about advancing uh, women's, um, women's seat, uh, having women uh, have a seat on the table because we need more women to kind of be represented in what, everything that we do, especially in our society. So those are my two passions and uh, look forward to kind of um, have this discussion and kind of take it forward from there. Okay, wow, that's amazing. So let's talk about a little bit, uh, you, as your profession being a marine scientist, what in, made you join marine uh, scientists like, what motivated you to become a scientist for the marine? Right, it's kind of it kind of is matched up to why I am focused on the environment. It started back when I was ten. Uh, my dad mm -hmm. actually, even way before I was born, I guess, uh, had a subscription to National Geographic, and before then, obviously, National Geographic was a magazine that was mailed to us every month. And when mm -hmm. I was ten, there was one um, interesting. Um, cover or magazine of one of the editions, I don't remember which month in particular, but the cover story was actually, and the cover page was a, an Omani marine turtle. And that's how I actually got very interested in marine life and understanding more about um, what's happening in Omani waters. And I was very fascinated with the wealth of marine life that we actually have here in Oman. And that's how we actually kind of spiraled on until I decided to kind of pursue marine sciences as a as a passion of mine and a focus. If I go back to my another memory which I can recall about you where I have heard and read in a magazine, were you part of a mount uh, highest mountain climbing with some people you went to Argentina or some country in Europe for climbing in the snow time or something? Am I right? I climb mountains. Um, I've climbed Mount Damavand in Iran and I've climbed Mount Kilimanjaro uh, as mm -hmm. part of expeditions, but I'm actually way more known for my trip to Antarctica, which actually mm -hmm. involved a trip to the Ar to Argentina and, and kind of climbing mountains there. So I have that adventurous passion, but obviously this passion came up with the fact that I wanted to fundraise for the environment to kind of raise awareness on the fact that we need to take care of the environment. Hence why I kind of involved myself in those ex activities. Yeah. Yeah. So now coming back to this, uh, our topic, which is building confidence in difficult times. So what do you have to tell my viewers that how to maintain or work on their confidence level, which is going down by going into depression and anxiety and stuff like that by being at home and everybody's in, in a situation where they want to just go out, you know, they just don't want to be at homes and enjoy the blissful life which Allah has given them. So how how would you like to tell them or teach them about confidence building in this difficult time? 
So I would say it would be looking at the bright side of everything. You know, um, everything has two sides. You have a glass half filled with water and a glass half empty, right? Um, mm -hmm. I remember one of my mentors when I I actually was quite upset that I failed in an uh, in a scientific research that I was doing, and you're always told that problems and like we all have problems it's not like it's unique to me or unique to you what the specificity specificity of the problem might be different but we all go through the same thing right mm -hmm. and the key to it is to take your own time don't don't overwhelm yourself with overthinking about this particular problem take it one day at a time take it 10 seconds at a time if you think that that's going to be helpful for you and find the find what makes you happy whatever small thing makes you happy in amongst those troubling times definitely there's no way that you would say that you haven't even smiled once in mm -hmm. the whole period of whatever problems that you face i'm sure you would find if you go back you'll remember that there were a few tiny things that kind of make you uh, smile and remember that life is good so i think we hold on to those small memories hold on to those small moments because it's the small moments after all that actually make you push ahead towards bigger things and I think it's very important, like we all at the end have two choices in life for every problem, right? And it depends on your attitude. Mm -hmm. The first one is basically complaining about everything and whining. And the other mm -hmm. part is kind of finding a way to kind of accommodate yourself and accept it and then work towards it. And for a lot of us, we tend to reject and don't want to accept a lot of what we go through um, because it's, it's something that's not normal, right? It's a new normal that's forcing you to kind of struggle with a lot of things and i think i learned throughout my life to kind of sit with the uncomfortable feeling that you have and just embrace that uncomfortable feeling before you just ignore it ignoring it is just going to make things worse so i think that's the first way to kind of acknowledge that what you're facing and then take mm -hmm. it one day at a time to kind of accept it you're absolutely right so would you like to share what how are you coping in this difficult time being in Oman where everything is locked up and you're not even allowed to go out? And how are you facing yourself being at home? What would you like to share with us? Sure, sure. Um, so um, just kind of an anecdote before coming to Oman, I was actually living alone as a student in Boston. Mm -hmm. So I tend to compare sometimes what I used to do there for fun and comparison to here. And I'm very thankful that despite the fact that I'm locked down, I still have my family. I still have people that I can connect with, even though that we are locked in the house. Like you can have conversations that most probably you might not have with people around you that because you're so busy that you don't even have the time to have that conversation. So um, that was one thing that I actually um, figured out and also I built up uh, productivity habits amongst myself. Like, what are the habits that I wanted to build in myself, but I always said that I didn't have time and I'll do it later. And one mm -hmm. of them for me was basically working out um, religiously uh, because of studies. I never had the time to kind of really spend and allocate time to just work out, but now you have all the time in the world, right? And it's been such a nice thing that this habit has spiraled on to involve all my family. And now we have family workout sessions every day, which has Marshall. been really cool. Um, and also, I think um, the most important thing in this is like associating yourself with the group of friends that you have. Okay. Like, can you meet like virtually on Zoom or is it WhatsApp or whatever apps that you have? Like, acquaint yourself with friends who appreciate you and understand what you're going through because they're the ones that will actually talk you out of these negative thoughts that you have. Um, yeah, and I also yeah. have, definitely. And I also yeah. um, have been quite busy with uh, signing up for a lot of like trainings and webinars that are available now for free. So I've been signing mm -hmm. up for a lot of them and just kind of gaining a lot of wisdom and knowledge from them. And also I will, yeah. And also on life, like there are times that I just choose to, watch Netflix and do nothing. And I think that's okay too. So you're working from home? You're working from home? I'm not working. I'm a student that just graduated yesterday. So I'm jobless at the moment. Um, but okay. I, but, I but I feel more. but I feel but I feel if you're jobless, it means you have a great opportunity to 
train people because as I, as I mentioned earlier that you're a great public speaker so people can learn from you and you can teach them and now you have a great degree from a Howard which definitely yeah. would you can bring a lot of people on board and help them out in reaching the heights you know of success in terms of joining Howard University you can just tell them what exactly the path and the dreams they should follow to reach Howard University. Of course, that's definitely one of the plans that I'm actually having in store, but it's also seeing how, what's the best platform for, for that? What do people actually want to hear? And it's also like gathering different points of views as well. I just don't want to be the only person sharing my point of view because it's quite different than someone else. So it's, mm -hmm. that's something definitely that's in the works and it's in the plan for June and I'm hoping that that will happen very soon where I can gather a few friends of mine and we can talk about our experiences, how you went through the application process and everything that people need to know about um, preparing themselves for higher education. That's definitely something. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. So now as we all know, and we are all going through the same thing uh, because of COVID-19. So how do you see the future for all the youngsters who are being working from home now and a lot of people are losing their jobs and a lot of industries are hit very badly. So now I'm sure their confidence are going to be shaken up, like where they should be applying or what they should be doing to support their families and, and themselves, you know, to get back work, get to back, back to work and start earning again. What message do you have for everybody? I think for young people, it's never over. I mean, we have if we compare ourselves with our ancestors and our grandparents and our parents they've all gone through mm -hmm. recessions right and this is just mm -hmm. the bottom but there's always going to be this is basically the the hill that we're going to and then something that's going to go up um and there's mm -hmm. going to be opportunities but i would say it's it's good to focus on future skills that you can enable yourself nowadays and that was one of the main uh, reasons why and motivation why I chose to kind of pursue another degree that was outside of my comfort zone like a public policy has nothing to do with marine sciences but mm -hmm. that's like a future skill that I know in order for me to secure myself for the future I would need to be very versatile right be very um, have different types of skills that would be suitable for me as I go into this line of work whatever that work is going to be so I think it's important to focus on future skills like and you could easily Google that like what are the future skills for 2030 and you'll see like there's so many uh, lists that pop up telling you exactly what type of skills nowadays like employers and governments are looking for in young people in order for them to have because these are skills that they don't have and they don't mm -hmm. have the capability to develop them now because it's kind of too late for them. So I think that would be um, important to kind of focus on like what are um the skills that you're looking for um what are the new skills that you have learned and what did you learn that you can kind of um implement right is there anything mm -hmm. that whatever experience that you've gone through in terms of your education or your work experience if you've just lost a job or are looking for something else that gave you uh something that's different beyond what is currently here and it's also important to kind of think that the question that a lot of employers are going to ask is how is your prior experience still relevant in the current environment we're talking about an environment that's post covid right how flexible are you from working from home versus traveling all the time in the midst of covid like some employers would want you to travel despite the fact that it is dangerous they want to test how flexible you are um, and how willing are you to accept the terms that they have, but in the same time be valuable to them and to yourself. So I think it's very important to kind of focus on how you can be relevant in terms of the skills that you're building for yourself if you don't have the skills or what you already have to build it for the future. I think that's um, quite important. Nice. So with this, with, with the expertise you're having, would you like to go and register yourself in any government entity to become a most productive person? In, can you rephrase that question? I still don't get it. Yeah, uh, what I mean to say, like the expertise you're having and the degree you're having at the moment, 
do you have any plan of setting up any research center or an incubation center where youngsters can come and look up to you for inspiration? Do you have any plan of that in future? Well, setting up a research center is quite big. Um, mm -hmm. And that's always going to be an ambition. Um, mm -hmm. I'm always available as a resource for anyone who needs um, guidance of some sort. I'm more than happy to kind of help out. That has always been my mission, and particularly if it's a woman who needs help in navigating tough scenarios, especially how do you negotiate as a uh, for your salary, for instance. Um, there's research that shows that women negotiate less for their salary increases versus men. So that's something that's very dear to me, and that's something that I am looking forward to kind of spreading across. Um, the current immediate plan is kind of to see how I could teach these skills that I already have to the coming generation or whoever is interested, and that's a plan that I have for the near future, hopefully. Mashallah, I wish you all the best for that. Inshallah, may your success, uh, may your dreams and your goals be achieved with a prop with the vision you have in mind. Okay, now the fact is that as we all know that you're part of the women rights as well. So what type of issues does the Omani woman faces in Oman where you feel that you want to contribute in helping them with their rights in Oman? Do you have any plans so for that? Yeah, sure. So it's, um, I wouldn't say like women rights in particular, it's more women empowerment. Um, mm -hmm. To kind of empower women, like I could say that the government has done a phenomenal job in allowing a lot of regulations, even in the in our own like Oman basic law, it states that no, there's no difference between a man and a woman. So it's very clear, the law is very clear. I think the issue that, and I'm sure Pakistan faces the same thing, the issue that we face is societal pressure, right? Whatever your parents say, whatever your dad says, whatever your brother or your husband says, and then you a lot of women kind of feel that that diminishes their right to kind of ask for more. And I think that's where I, I want to focus a lot in empowering women to understand that whatever dreams that they have is valid. Uh, and because one person tells you, a man tells you that you can do it, doesn't necessarily mean that you should lose hope, right? You should find, and there's, and there's more and more men out there who champion women. So you need to find that male ally who can actually advocate for you. How do you kind of navigate those scenarios where people tell you no and change it to a yes? So that's something that um, I've been focusing a lot on. It started with my background. So I used to play uh, soccer before or football. And mm -hmm. I kind of went on to speak about how women were kind of societally, uh, the society treated <laughs> women who pursued sports differently than men, which is not something that's specific to the Arab countries or to our part of the world, it's all over the world. You could see the headlines every day. And yeah. it, this kind of caused a lot of like people not accepting the fact that women are allowed to play sports and so on. And that's mm -hmm. why I kind of went further into kind of pursuing more of climbing mountains and so on. So while I was raising awareness on the environment, I was also kind of sending the message to women that you can do whatever you set your mind to. And it's not like I come, and a lot of people will say that, oh, you're lucky because you come from a background where your parents were supportive all the time. And I would always say, no, that was not always the case. I had mm -hmm. to kind of convince them very hard until they actually saw the actual result and made, they approved for approved at the end and said, okay, do what you want. Know. It's not yeah. easy. Um, a lot of people see people do something. It's like, oh, it's easy for them because it's different. It's and actually not. It's the same. Well, well, I would say. Well, I would say all. Every, well, I would just add little stuff here. What you're mentioning is totally correct. That all the countries which have the woman issues and stuff, they all go through the same. You know, and and then they they empower themselves, or somebody empowers them, and then they come out with their yeah. freedom or their talent, the skills, and then they possesses and they share with everybody. Exactly, and it all ties up to confidence at the, at the mm. end of the day. It's like, how, it's do you build, how do you have wellness confidence within yourself as a woman mm. to kind of go forward? Um, because for a lot of us, we're very nurturing and we're very socialized as characters. So how do you step out of that and be t tend to be a bit selfish in thinking of yourself as well? 
So a lot of us don't think of that. And it's always good to have a reminder to remind yourself that you can think of yourself while bettering others. And you should focus on yourself if your message is to help others as well. Inshallah, mashallah. So do you believe in collaborations? Of course, 100%. And that's why I mentioned like male allyship is important. Um, you should like, even in terms of like government, the government needs to work with the private sector, with civil society. Collaboration is, is key in everything, even in the nuclear of your family, right? If your parents and your mm -hmm. siblings don't com communicate and collaborate, it's a disaster. It's not a family, mm -hmm. right? No, why I asked that question was simply basically because of the field which you are in, in terms of a woman empowerment, where you can collaborate with a similar type of interest from different parts of the world, like US, US Canada, UK, Pakistan, India, you know, Sri Lanka, the other places where women are doing the similar type of jobs, what you, what you intend to do. And it's always great to connect different cultural and the mindsets the people have, you know, so that's going to yep. benefit and it's a win-win situation for everybody. Yeah, definitely. That's definitely something that I'm very uh, interested in. And the more the collaboration, the better, as they say, the more the merrier, right? And I'm sure you should visit Pakistan and express yourself in whatever you're doing. Oh, so I'm sure a lot, yeah. of, a lot of that women would like to come forward and hear from you and learn from you. Yeah, that would be a dream, actually. I've always wanted to come to Pakistan. I actually was planning on a visit to climb, I don't remember which mountains there were, but I was planning on heading to Pakistan, but things didn't work out at the end. But hopefully well, that's- year, Well, plan. this year, Pakistan was nominated as a 2020 destination yes, for tourism, yes. but unfortunately, COVID-19 has spoiled all those plans. A lot of people were in were in the position or they were planning to come down to Pakistan to explore the northern areas and stuff like that. So it's really a beautiful country for sure. So I'm sure I will look forward to seeing you in Pakistan when everything, once everything is normal and yeah. to host you yeah, <laughs> and take you around, take you around in Karate and an stuff honor. like that. Definitely. So thank you so much, Ms. Rometa, for coming down in your busy schedule and having a session on talking about a subject which is about confidence and we all need confidence. And thank you so much. So, so no, nice of you. Thank you, you, you for like the to... opportunity. Thank you so much. Uh, I really, really appreciated yeah. this. And it was really good to kind of have a chat with a friend I've known for a long time on Facebook and we've only met a few times. So it's really good. Alhamdulillah. So you're always welcome to tap on me anytime for any work, any collaboration. I would be more than happy to support and connect you with the, all the people I know in Oman and all around the country, uh, the Thank world you. actually. Thank you. Thank okay, you. So just a small request in the end would be, would you like to just say a small shout out about my channel? If you can share it within your groups, your network, and would you like everyone to ask them to subscribe my channel? That would be wonderful on your part. Of course, of course, I will invite my friends and network to join and subscribe to Mac Vlogs for sure. Thank you so much. So nice of you. Wish you all the best and be safe, be healthy and enjoy and keep smiling as you always yeah. do. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You. Take care. Bye-bye.